own cocoa plantation. Mm -hmm. Well, there are sweet promises made by the company or the industry in that you grow well palm, you improve your lives, you have better housing, you have uh, yeah, better health, sanitation, education, better health, better social services, social and economical services. You have good housing and you know, your living standard will be improved, you have cars under your house, you know, all these stupid promises. And then, you know, because the people are not told of the the negative impact or the disadvantages, the oil palm is expanding through VOP and mini estates. Okay, VOP is village oil palm where people are encouraged to plant oil palm on their own land, and, uh, and mini estates. Uh, yeah, mini estates again, its own customary land. One classical example would be of uh, Heropa mini estate that's in Ango village some kilometers away from, uh, 20 kilometers away from Pogundata town. Mm. And um, the Herop landowners have about 85 hectares of land cultivated with oil palm. And uh, they receive 20 kina per hectare annual rent and 10% royalties. Oil palm is uh, oil palm was said by the state by the government that uh, oil palm is to improve uh, people's lives, but how it is today, how it looks like is is uh, driving people to poverty. Yeah. Because uh, I say this because oil palm is uh, is a dependency crop, which is pulls us all to concentrate more on oil palm and forget about all the other activities. Which the yeah, the benefits from oil palm is less cannot cater for the whole uh, family. The company no longer operates the transport now. It gives contracts to private contractors, people who are not from this province. Uh, so has the cost of the transport changed? Yes, yes, yes. From uh, 16 kina. That's the, and within 10 years time, 16 kina per ton. And uh, within the time frame of less than 10 years, it is jumped right up to 50 kina yes so that's uh, deducted from the, uh, the growers the payments payments the yes i'm stinger i'm stinger you go wait what do you know what i'm making up set now rotten bunches rotten bunches yeah. ah they leave it 1900 delay delay in picking up and got rot rotten and then when they weighed it and then took it to the way bridge to the and in the middle hmm. so they put a pipe out to the ship or yes. uh -huh. yeah. Because there are no... High tide. This way and then with high tide, everything goes to the room. Room Jiao on the other side. Yeah. We got through on the other side. <laughs> The indigenous people, we, the native peoples, are environmental scientists ourselves. We lived with it, we stayed with it, we used it, and we know what it is, how it is like. Yeah. And over the past uh, couple of decades, we've seen very dramatic uh, changes occurring within the, the color of the water changing, water bed rising no uh, fish or other aquatic life in the uh, water and the water tastes um, bad. Embogo River, it's down towards the Orobe, some 20-30 uh, kilometers away from Pocundeta. Yes, um, Embogo River and the Aurora River can be a very classic example of that. Yeah. According to testimonies from uh, villagers who lived, who lived there, villagers there, he uh, said that the, the water was fast flowing, sea fish, shark, all float up there. They, they, they swam up there. And people usually catch them. Even dinghies go up. But uh, now dinghies cannot go. No sea fish, no bigger fish. 
an algae growth is covering and the Ahora Kakanata People's Foundation, uh, AKPF, it's our group. We are beginning to encourage people to diversify agriculture, to reap maximum benefits out of their land. The mixed farming will consist of uh, cash crop, uh, fruits and vegetables, and uh, livestock. It's a cash crop like uh, vanilla, cocoa, coffee, yes, and other, other cash crops, and um, vegetables, fruits, uh, especially our traditional crops, which we feel they are marketable.